Hey guys, so the tech industry has received some devastating news the other day. Bob Lee, aka Crazy Bob, as some people call him, was stabbed to death on the streets of San Francisco at 2.35 a.m. Tuesday morning. Now, for those of you that didn't know about Bob Lee, there's actually a really good chance that you're using software that he contributed to right now. He used to work for Google on the Android team doing core development work for the Android operating system. Uh, later on, he joined Square, which then renamed themselves to Block. Uh, he developed, I believe it was their payment app, and he also created Cash App, which is one of the more popular, uh, I guess, apps for sending fiat to people. And he even had contributions in the crypto space. Towards the end of his life, he was the chief product officer at MobileCoin. So, like I said, Bob had a hand in so many different technologies that have made this world a better place, but more important than his technical contributions was his character. I didn't know him personally, but I have seen a couple of interviews that he's been in, and I mean, he seems like a pretty good guy from those, but more important than just that is all of these, uh, all this outpouring that we're seeing online from people who have talked to him, from people who have known him, uh, testifying to his character. So, you know, I really believe that this was a pretty good guy uh, and the tech industry really needs more people like that because it seems to attract a lot of narcissists. And Bob was also a single father, which is probably the most tragic part about his loss. Now, at this time, nobody really knows a lot about this attack. Nobody knows what the motive for the stabbing was. Um, I don't think the police have even caught the perp, but you know, based on what we do know, I mean, it happening on the streets of San Francisco late at night, if I had to guess, it was probably just a random homeless person that's suffering from mental illness that just randomly did it. Now, one thing that I have noticed through my education and my career in tech and also going to conventions and just talking to people in this industry is that a lot of people working in tech and a lot of people that are very successful in tech don't seem to like firearms. They don't seem to like people having them or carrying them or using them for self-defense. And of course, they themselves don't have firearms or you know carry them for self-defense. Not every tech person is like this, of course, and I think a big reason that the industry as a whole seems to be like this is that cities like San Francisco and Cambridge, New York, these tend to be a lot of those big tech states or big tech cities, but they're in anti-gun localities. Um, like me personally, I hardly ever go to Cambridge these days just because that whole damn city is like a gun-free zone. Uh, now look, I don't expect this video to change a bunch of tech bros opinions and, you know, change all of you guys into like John McAfee or, you know, some kind of gun toting person. But I keep seeing these anti-gun comments on Reddit and Hacker News and, and they're actually being posted uh, under the news about Bob saying that him having a gun wouldn't have changed anything. Um, and I know for a fact that this stuff is being posted by people that are just ignorant about guns, you know, saying goofy things like he wouldn't have been able to get to it in time. Look, I wasn't there. Maybe you're right. But as you just saw, <laughs> I can say with certainty that him having a gun would have increased his chances of survival. Okay, a gun is a distance tool and a knife has to be used up close. So... If you see an attack coming from greater than, I believe they call the 21 foot rule, right? Where if you have something like a two second draw, you know, if they're greater than 21 feet away, you've got a pretty good chance of drawing that gun and getting shots on your target if somebody with a knife or a sword or whatever is charging at you. Um, the only thing that might have been better than Bob having the gun himself, which I'm pretty sure even anti-gun Redditors can agree with me on would be him having a bodyguard or a cop being there, which at the end of the day, those two things are just guys with guns. Okay, you know, there's a saying in the pro-gun community that God made man and then cult came around and made man equal. And this is double true for women, which as we know, or, or at least I hope we know, 
that the average man is much stronger than the average woman. But here's another thing that I have noticed, again, from my time working in tech, from uh, working with a lot of people in the tech industry and also from posting some of my workout videos to my channel, which is that a lot of the men who work in tech are also weaker than the average man, physically weaker than the average man, or at least weaker than, I guess, what I would consider to be an average man in my book, because I'll be honest with you, when I post workout videos, I get a lot of people that are telling me, you know, oh, I'm so strong and stuff like that. And I, I really do appreciate the support. I mean, I'm sure that for a lot of you guys, you're just being supportive and I appreciate it. But in all honesty, my lifts are pretty mid. They only look impressive if you compare me to a tech bro that, you know, the only thing they lift is like their hands to a keyboard. Uh, and then of course you need fighting experience on top of being physically strong to be able to defend yourself without a weapon. And that's only if there's one person that's attacking you and they're unarmed. I mean, any martial arts expert who also knows a thing or two about firearms is gonna tell you, yeah, I mean, multiple attackers, uh, or even if someone who's a whole lot bigger than you, right? Like if you had to deal with a certified big boy, someone who's gonna make me look like a little schoolgirl, such as my buddy Darth Bloat on Instagram here. Uh, and look, he's a nice guy, don't get me wrong. Darth Bloat would never beat you up or rob you or anything like that unless you really deserved it. But look, if someone who is much stronger than you like this has malicious intent, they're gonna do whatever they want with you. And if you've got a family that you're supposed to be protecting, they're gonna do whatever they want with them as well, unless you have that great equalizer to stop them. Now, another reason that my tech bros should be getting tooled up is a lot of us actually have shit that's worth protecting. All right, if you're employed in the tech industry and you know, you're know you actually doing pretty good, you're making like six figures, which honestly isn't even really good. I mean, that's probably about average as far as you know maybe um, programmers and, and engineers and cybersecurity experts, things like that. But anyway, it, let's say you're doing great, right? You're making six figures. You're driving the new Tesla. You're living in a nice apartment in the city. People are going to take notice of that. And they're going to think you've got a lot of money, even if you really don't. I mean, you're just living that lifestyle of someone who does. And if people think you're weak, if people think you got money, and if you're the kind of person who's not really paying attention to your surroundings, you know, like you walk around looking at the phone or you have headphones on so that you can't hear your surroundings, all of this is a deadly combination. If I just described you, it's literally just a matter of time until you end up crossing paths with a predator that wants to victimize you. And just like how technology is getting more and more advanced every day, criminals are getting more and more advanced every day. There's letter literally gangs that specialize in robberies, that specialize in home invasions. There's gangs that'll be out on certain streets that pickpocket people, like they'll have you know, people that are looking out or trying to lead you down a certain alleyway so that they can take advantage of you. And as the economy gets worse, these gangs are gonna start getting more active, they're gonna start recruiting more members, and they're gonna start getting more violent. You should also be getting tooled up if you're a crypto bro. Now, I've got a feeling that certain crypto bros, definitely like Bitcoiners and uh, you know Monero Chaz, there tend to be a lot of libertarians in those groups. So there's probably a chance that uh, more percentages of crypto bros that are in the tech industry uh, have guns versus no coiners in the tech industry. But if you're one of these people that I see on Twitter with like the NFT profile pics and you have your crypto wallet addresses in your bio for the whole world to see and they're transparent blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin where, you know, literally I could just put your stuff into Etherscan and I can see exactly how much money you have in your wallet or if you moved it to somewhere else. Uh, so, you know, if I'm describing you and you're also the kind of person who goes on Twitter and is posting a bunch of anti-gun stuff, you know, you're talking about how stupid owning a gun is, you're pretty much telling the whole world that you're like a bank without armed cards, which is terrible OPSEC. And you know, it's weird that we have this disconnect between tech savvy people and I guess 
gun savvy people. You know, most of you watching uh, probably have pretty good digital OPSEC, which by the way, OPSEC, for those of you wondering, just means operation security. Okay, how secure are your working procedures? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're a hacker, or that you're a military person or whatever, just how secure are your day-to-day -day operations? So most of you watching, uh, you probably have things like encrypted devices as part of your OPSEC, encrypted connections, strong passwords that are saved in a password manager with multiple factors of authentication that couldn't even be cracked by a supercomputer in a trillion years. But realistically, if someone was going to hack a tech bro or a cypherpunk, you know, somebody like this, they're probably going to go for the wrench method. And getting a gun, training with it, and keeping it with you at all times, that's the only way to realistically protect yourself from that attack vector. So look, getting yourselves some physical security, uh, and also you should understand, especially if you've got the gun already, that you know this thing is not a problem solver, okay? Despite what you might have seen from that uh, Drugs Inc. meme, <laughs> you know, a, a gun is not a problem solver. It's really more of a problem transformer, okay? This transforms an immediate problem, an immediate, you know, deadly problem to, I guess, my life and, and, and limbs into a legal problem that I have down the road, okay? And you best believe, if you pull a gun, uh, especially if you shoot someone, even if it's, if it's justified, you're going to have a legal problem. So you should also go ahead and get yourself some concealed carry insurance. It's basically like having a lawyer on standby. You know, you pay a little bit of money each month and they'll spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, even, you know, up to a million dollars in some cases, defending you if you have to use that firearm in self-defense. And also, you should understand that getting a gun, buying a gun, it doesn't automatically make you Rambo. Um, in fact, and this is another problem with people in the tech industry, uh, if your only gun experience is from playing video games, then it's actually worse than you having zero gun experience. You have negative gun experience, okay? I could probably train a six-year-old up to be a good shooter faster than I could train you because first I have to remove all the brainwashing that came from Call of Duty or you know whatever <laughs> video games that you were playing. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna take some work and it's gonna take some money for you to become a good shooter because you're gonna have to probably spend a lot of money at the range and if you're living in a city, then the range fees are insane. But hey, it is what it is, okay? It is worth it if you're one of these tech bros that are making a lot of money and you know, you're making a lot of money for your family so that you can protect them. But yeah, RIP to Crazy Bob and stay safe out there, guys.